Uh, thanks. Hey, so I'm Gary Mullen. I'm also part of the API Academy team and um, and the Broadcom Layer 7 um, engineering architecture team. So today I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Kubernetes operators and how the Layer 7 operator will allow us to reshape the deployments, uh, deployment maintenance and resiliency um, of Layer 7 API gateway deployments in Kubernetes. We have a couple of slides to get through and then we'll head into a quick demo of our operator in, in action. So all the all of the information on the screen here, with the exception of this diagram on the right, um, can be found on the link in the top right. Um, if you aren't familiar with Kubernetes operators, then Kubernetes.io is a great place to get started. There's also a wealth of really great resources out there um, that you'll be able to find as well. So in a nutshell, Kubernetes is great at managing applications and deployments, but it doesn't have domain-specific knowledge or expertise. Um, about applications or services um, like the Blaze of an API gateway. And that leaves more complex tasks um, and processes to manual intervention or custom scripts, workflows, jobs, and that, could be, that can become um, really cumbersome and exceedingly hard to maintain over longer or sustained periods of time as you have people joining your organization, moving away, and moving away to different teams and leaving and so on. So instead of customizing or modifying the core Kubernetes code, um, operators allow us to extend the functionality of Kubernetes using custom resources and the control loop. So in that, operators are software extensions um, to Kubernetes. And that gives us a way to take domain-specific knowledge and expertise of a human operator or a vendor and write code to automate tasks that would otherwise be manual. And that takes a lot of the guesswork out of how to deploy your application into Kubernetes, how to upgrade it, maintain it, test it, um, and all of that leads to flattening the learning curve, which gives you more time to focus on actually using an application um, versus um, uh, using an application versus trying to figure out how to do all of that stuff from documentation and so on. And that allows you to get the, the maximum value um, out of it. So one thing to mention as well is, yes, uh, today I'll be introducing the Layer 7 operator. Um, the Layer 7 operator is built using the operator SDK, which is a standard method for building operators in Kubernetes. So the flows and so on that I'll be introducing, introducing today are quite generic and are things that are going to apply to most operators that you'll see that you'll see out there from, um, uh, from other vendors and so on. So the diagram on the right here I have is a very basic depiction of the control loop that, um, that uh, Kubernetes operators use to manage applications. <clears throat> Um, we have very simply observe, analyze, and act. The, so this all starts with, um, let's say you want to deploy an application into Kubernetes. You're going to define a desired state in the form of a bunch of configuration files. So you'll have something like a deployment file. You might have a service because you want to expose your application to an external or an internal audience. And you might also have a config map and some secrets for additional configuration that you want to go into your application. So you're going to take that desired state you're going to send that into Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes. Kubernetes is going to observe that hey, I've got some uh, uh, hey, I've got some configuration that I need to um, that I need to take care of. It's going to analyze it. Does your desired state match reality? And if it doesn't, then Kubernetes is going to act by instantiating your application or updating your application in Kubernetes and making that available. So with the layer seven operator, this is a 50,000 foot view of the kind of the basics and the overall that you get with it. I'll break this down into the different flows that we might, um, uh, I'll break this down into one of the flows that, um, that we might have um, from an operations perspective or from a developer that wants to have a gateway um, or deploy a gateway. And um, as mentioned, this is something that's gonna to apply to most operators built using the operator SDK, which is one of the standard patterns for doing so. So we might have someone in the operations team or someone in a development team that wants to have a um, that wants to have a gateway up and running. Uh, the way that they're going to do that, the way that they're going to define that desired state, is by creating a gateway custom resource. Um, so gateway custom resources is something that the layer seven operator manages. Um, that's going to go to our layer seven operator. It's going to kick off the um, the control loop or the reconcile loop or the reconcile function. Um, layer seven operator is going to observe. Hey, I've got this configuration here. It's going to analyze it. Does desired state match the reality that I want or the reality that's running in the cluster? And if it doesn't, in our case today, it's not going to. Um, the layer seven operator is going to act by instantiating not only the gateway deployment, um, but it's also going to take on the, um, the service that we're going to use to access our gateway. It's going to look at additional configuration, like do we want to have a load balancer there? Um, do we want to, uh, or, or do we want to go through an English resource? 
um, to, to access services. So something else that we something else that we might want to do um, from an option. Um, so something that would be optional is having a management service. So we want to make sure that all of our um, all of our management functions, if we do have any for application, are only exposed internally um, to internal um, to internal tool chains and CI/CD pipelines. Um, so we can also create a management service that's going to be locked to um, an internal port and be available internally only that developers can interface with. Um, some of the other things that we have um, from our operators perspective, uh, the first is horizontal pod autoscalers or HPAs. Um, autoscaling is something that Kubernetes gives us for free. Um, so that's a configuration that we make available in our gateway cluster resource. And that's something that we'll also, um, we'll also take a look at the cluster resource and, and uh, see some of the configuration in that as well. Um, the Layer 7 API gateway has um, uh, uses um, MySQL database to maintain persistence. In the demo today, we're not going to be configuring that. We also have a shared memory, um, a shared memory data store um, that we use called Hazelcast. We're not going to be configuring that either. Uh, but any additional configuration that you might want to have, or external systems that you need to connect out to, um, would all be configurable from the uh, from the custom resource perspective. So you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to have additional configuration for um, for other things that you want to connect into. An operator is going to an operator is going to take your configuration and make everything um, and make everything a reality. The other thing that we have and what we'll be using today um, for our demo is a policy repository. So that's just a Git repository. It's got a um, it's got a file that the it's, it has a configuration file that the gateway understands. Um, so that's going to be configuration configuration is code from the repository. It's a very very simple policy that's just going to give us back um, a hello world endpoint. Um, and that's going to be configured, and that's going to be configured um, in the gateway custom resource as well for us. And we'll also take a look at how that gets applied, and um, and, and sort of what the end result of that is as well. So just a quick um, just a quick overview of um, of what we've just discussed, and then also a note on install mode, which are quite important for operators. So. The managed custom resource that we'll be focusing on today is Gateway. Um, currently, that's the only custom resource that we manage um, as, as um, kind of an alpha release of this product. Um, in the future, we would look to cover additional products as well. So something else that something else that we have is a set of, of um, API management helm charts that cover our portfolio. Um, we wanted to get at least feature parity with our Gateway Helm chart so that, um, so that if you're moving between the two deployment methods, then you're going to get a similar experience across both, and the rest of uh, and the rest of the features here are things that we've already discussed. So the dedicated management service optionally, um, if you want to hook in existing tool chains um, for uh, for CI/CD processes, that gets integration, which we'll look at um, auto scaling, which we get for free, and um, and a fair amount more. So in terms of install modes, the default or the recommended way to install operators in Kubernetes, not just the Layer seven operators, um, layer seven operator is going to be own namespace. So for own namespace, basically the operator is going to be able to manage everything. Um, is going to be able to manage everything that it needs to uh, lock down to the namespace that it's deployed into. The reason that's a, the reason that this is important is because operators also manage other things, like config maps, deployments, secrets, stateful sets. Um, and so on in Kubernetes. And so if you have an operator deployed in all namespaces, you would be able to say, you, you would be able to configure the operator to only watch a certain set of namespaces, but that could potentially be a problem if you don't necessarily trust the operator, operator that you're deploying, um, or if there's an update that, um, that uh, or if there's an update that um, you don't feel hasn't been tested properly or something, or, or something along those lines. Um, it's going to be a better option to deploy it in own namespace, um, in its own namespace uh, with that method, and um, have everything restricted to a singular place. And for the demo today, we're going to be deploying it into own namespace, to own namespace, um, and that namespace is going to be aptly named uh, layer seven. So if there's no questions, um, I'm not sure if, if there's any questions. Um, otherwise, I'll move straight into the demonstration. Okay. Um, so I guess the first thing. So I guess the first thing that I'll show is the um, is the actual layer seven operator itself. Uh, layer seven operator repository itself. Um, this is going to be very similar to what you would get with a base um, with a base project from an operator SDK. So the structure is going to be much the same, um, and it's going to be much the same going to different operators. 
So as mentioned, so as mentioned, the idea with an operator is to take um, is to take all of the deployments, management, um, fault finding, troubleshooting, and so on, um, and take that into almost a managed um, a, a managed service managed by the operator um, in code. The um, the bundle repo or the additional Git repo that we're looking at today is just this one here. Uh, we have a um, we have a very simple, a very simple um, bundle file that the gateway is going to understand. That's going to create a hello world service onto our gateway. Um, we're not going to touch anything. We're not going to touch anything here. Um, the lace of an operator is going to connect the um, is going to connect our gateway into the right place. And make sure that's available um, when the gateway starts up. So configuration is code um, and relying on Git as a source of truth. And there's there's obviously additional things that we could do with that, but for the time being, we're keeping the Git integration relatively um, straightforward and simple. So the first thing that we'll need to do in this environment is, is actually deploy the operator. Um, to do that, we don't need to download the entire code repository. All we need to do is have this bundle file. I mentioned that we'll be doing an own namespace installation or deployment. So we're just going to need that bundle file there. Um, that contains the custom resource definition. It contains um, operator, the operator deployments, and it also contains the role-based access control that we're going to need, the roles and the role bindings that we're going to need to do this. Um, if you wanted to deploy your operator in a cluster-wide fashion, then you would go down, yeah, you, you would go with the cluster-wide, um, the cluster-wide bundle, and that would include all of the cluster-wide, um, the cluster-wide roles and so on, which is a bit more dangerous. Um, it's going to create roles, uh, cluster-wide roles in your Kubernetes cluster that that's going to have access to probably more than you want them to. Um, so from a security standpoint and from a separation of concern standpoint, uh, the standard own namespace um, installation path is, is going to generally be a better option. So to do that, all we're going to run is kubectl apply minus f, and we'll go to that deploy operator folder, and we'll deploy the bundle.yaml. This is going to create a bunch of stuff from us, as I mentioned. Um, that bundle file contains the CRD, the operator, and, um, and the RBAC stuff. Um, if we run kubectl get all now, we should see some um, we should see some stuff coming up. So that stuff's still being created. Yeah. So you can see. So you can see we've got a um, the place of an operator starting up. Um, we've got a service. Um, we've got a service uh, for that internally, and um, we've got that um, that deployment as well. So the next thing we so the next thing that we would want to do is actually deploy a gateway custom resource. So as part of the installation, we also installed a custom resource definition um, for the gateway. So if we now do qctl gateway, then we're currently going to have no gateways available in this layer seven namespace. So to deploy that, um, so to deploy that, uh, we'll deploy it and then we'll take a look at the configuration. So for that, we're going to use customize. So qctl minus k for customize. And we're going to pass it the gateway folder. Um, I've got to add apply. And that's not being created. So if we now do a QTTL and we get our deployments, then we can see we've got our layer seven operator, our layer seven operator, and we've also got ephemeral SSG, which is the custom resource um, of type gateway that we have created. So that's going to be ready soon. Um, let's quickly look at the configuration. So in this configuration, we have um, we have our own custom API version um, that is part of our custom resource definition. Um, one of the things that our operator manages, and we've got a resource of type gateway. So I'm not defining so I'm not defining a bunch of different files for different configuration. Um, I'm confining one, I'm defining one file that contains everything that the operator needs to instantiate my gateway deployments in um, in Kubernetes. I've got some very um, some very basic things here, like where the image, uh, like like which image I should use, and if I have a, um, a repository that requires authentication, um, and I've also got stuff like the service account name um, and so on. By default, we have always get enabled, so we should have two replicas running shortly. Um, and something else to something else to note here is that we don't have any authentication information um, in this um, in this custom resource, so everything is going to be defined up front um, in the example folder that we have here. We have um, some of the files that are going to be required to do that. Um, the idea being that those would be created beforehand or during deployment, but they wouldn't form part of um, this gateway resource. 
we have the Git integration here. So we have repository enabled. Um, that's going to connect into the, uh, the layer 7 bundle repo that we talked about earlier. And it's going to um, and it's going to make sure that the um, that the stuff in that bundles folder is available in our gateways. We've also got um, basic. Uh, we've also got some of the basic stuff that you can do with Kubernetes deployments. You can add inner containers. You can add sidecars. You can add additional volumes. Um, um, anything that you want available on the gateway um, or available on your gateway deployments, um, you can define um, through this custom resource. And you've got additional information that you can define around management, how you want the gateway service to be um, exposed, whether that's a low for low balancer, whether that's um, uh, through an ingress resource. <clears throat> so for today, we've just got we've just got we just have this going through an ingress, um, an ingress resource. So now that we've um, created the gateway, we should be able to see now that we um, we should be able to see that we've got ephemeral SSG. We can see we have that deployment created. So if I get that and I do and I output in YAML, we can add a gap, and I output that in YAML. Um, we can see we have everything that we defined in this file. And I can also see I've got something in status, which is a commit ID. So that's the latest, that's the latest commit ID that I've got on my um, on the place and bundle repo. Um, if that commit ID changes, then the operator is going to pick that up and it's going to automatically make sure that um, the desired state of my repository is going to match whatever I'm running on my API gateway. So that's one. Um, so that's um, that's one use of using um, of using that control loop to constantly make sure that um, the gateway is running as expected. And there's additional things that we can do here as well. So it could be it could be making sure that testing and stuff works as expected, um, and so on. So the so the last thing that we do um, is just hit that um, that hello world service that we spoke about. So we can go to the gateway's endpoint, and we'll simply just type in hello world there. Um, uh, it helps if I spell hello world correctly. And we can see we've got a response there of hello world. So very, very simple. Um, if I then want to remove everything, what I'm going to do is qctl delete, minus k, and I can delete um, the Gateway. And if I go back to my deployments, I can see that that's, um, that's been deleted. So in summary, um, I've given you a very brief introduction to Kubernetes operators, a very brief introduction to the layer 7 operator, so some of the value that you can get from using um, operators in Kubernetes, and also, some, um, and also um, a quick word on the best way to install them from a namespaced perspective. Thank you.